guys, while there's only a few of you on here, I'm just going to jump straight in. So I've done this rose in Pam Pastels. And now I just want to keep working on the petals a little bit and then start adding the water droplets. But what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to show you how I got this far with the petals. So I'm pretty, I'll just like redo a petal and then um, I'm going to start working with the colored pencils over the top. Now the entire tutorial for this whole thing will be on the Pan Pastel YouTube channel uh, when this is all done. So you guys will have it available there if you want to see it all. Um, I'm hoping that it's not going to be too jumpy. Hopefully the audio is all good so even if I am a bit jumpy over here, it won't be too bad. We'll see. <laughs> okay, so jumping in. Oh, and if you guys are on, say hello in the chat. I don't ever stream this time of the day, so it is a bit different. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to use this pointy pan pastel um, soft tool, and I am going to take a pan pastel color. This one is permanent red shade. And I'll put it here. And we can enhance the color of this petal a bit more over here. So what I've done is I've got about two or three layers on here. So this is the fourth layer. So between each layer, I will just seal it with a fixative. Hey guys, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a couple of different ones on here during this time of the day. Um, so nice to see you on here. Hey Andrea, Sally, um, Moto's Art Corner. Hello, River Faye. Hey guys, it's a pleasure having you guys on here. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's not too glitchy. The, the internet doesn't seem amazing right now. Sorry guys, my OBS just cut out. Should be all good now. Um, Silk Spinner, normally middle of the night when these get streamed, so nice to see it live. Yeah, totally. <laughs> hey, Wicked! Hey, Tracy. Cool, cool, cool. Let's keep going. And hopefully the stream's gonna be alright now. So you can see what like a it gets a real soft silky look. And now I'd like to add a bit of a darker red. So I'm gonna use the permanent red extra dark. And then I want it even darker, so I will use some of the raw umber extra dark. That noise will only be on for a couple of seconds, so I've got the gas heater on because it's freezing. And um, that is it just warming things up. So hopefully it won't be too much of a bother. <laughs> Yeah. 
so that's pretty much what I've just done with the petals. You just keep working it, keep working it the whole time. And then, yeah, and then you can just add your pencil details over the top. So what I want to do is I actually just want to jump in with my pencils. And I better do that before I get too carried away with the pan pastels. So one thing I always struggle with with my drawings, I always do this, it's just something that just never changes, is when I do the background first, um, sometimes I don't get that, uh, that really smooth transition between the main subject matter and the background, but the beauty about having using sanded paper is that um, you can easily cover that with pencils. So. Let's use, let's use this section as an example. I want to make this background really dark um, next to the petals of the rose. So I'm going to do that with my pencils. Let me just put my pen pastel away. And grab some pencils. And yeah, how insane is the red? Like, the red is pretty amazing. Um, the pigment of the pen pastels on the sanded paper is just like, wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, I want to work on this. If you guys want to see the reference on your screen, look in the description and you can download it for yourself and then have a better look because what you can't see it on my screen so if you want to know why i'm working on a particular area the way i am um just check out the the description <laughs> i finished that whole sentence in my head <laughs> But not out loud. Okay, so I'm using cellophane for my hand because the pan pastels have gotten quite messy. And now I'm going to use the Payne's Grey number 181. So I'm using my Faber Castell Polychromos pencils for this. And I want to define the background. So I'm sort of just going to make it look smoother. Like it's a part of the background already, which we did in the pan pastels. But you, we don't want to see the paper coming through, if that makes sense. Let me get this light here. Susie says, so nice to see this time of the day. Yeah, it, it was just spur of the moment. I was like, I feel like going live. Let's just do it. Get some of the other guys on here as well. <laughs> Becky, hey, Sheldon, first stream I have managed to catch live. Love from the UK. So nice to have you, Becky. Okay. I definitely have to try and do more of these, I guess. See how much smoother that looks already? He's like, yes, please, Shelby. Okay. <laughs> I 
That looks so much smoother from what I can see. That, to me it does. Hopefully that doesn't look too, too dark for you guys. Yeah, there we go, that's better. Okay, now I want to make that look a bit smooth. Actually, we can still work the top here a little bit more. Yeah, but I'll, I'll start working on the petals over here. So I'm going to keep using this color and darken some of the petal that I can see from my reference. quite dark because it's pretty much right in the back. bit more depth. <gasps> Maureen, you're awake? Hello! <laughs> uh, Andrea is saying using normal colored pencils with pastels, is it okay? Yes, it's totally cool. So usually if the pastel tends to move around a bit more than what I'd like, then I'd seal it with a fixative first. And then I would carry on with more pastel or pencils over the top. But yeah, colored pencils and the pan pastels work perfect together. You don't have to use pastel pencils with pan pastels. You can use colored pencils. Andrea's asking and if it would be soft pastels so I think I sort of answered that so you can use pastel pencils or colored pencils on the top of pan pastels but they they're the chalky ones so pan pastels are like chalk pastels or pastel pencils um, not oil past you can't use oil pastels on it they are two very different things so pan pastels and the pastel pencils are, are very dry. Um, not like the oil pastels, so you wouldn't mix oil pastels with. I call them chalk pastels, but dry pastels?
<laughs> this is causing a nice, creating a nice value change or separation between these petals. Now I would like to make them a little bit less rounded because they do have a bit more texture or a bit more of a wave. There we go. Even like here, add a bit more roundness to each petal. This new bus stitch antimicrobial sharpener, which I have not tried yet. This will be the first time because my electric sharpener, I need to tie this down though. Ah, so it comes with um nails so i have to i guess screw this onto the table which i don't want to do i just want to hold it and it's not gonna work hmm. sharpens really good i think <laughs> considering i can't put it down on the table okay I'm going to have to screw it down, I guess. So my background looks very different. I moved out of the studio room so now, so that we have a spare room. So now I'm in the games room slash theater room. Um, and I don't have space for green screen behind me. So that's why it looks a little bit different. But um, I don't mind it like this at all, actually. I might just show you with the webcam, if I can. So behind me, so that's the games table. And shelves and stuff. <laughs> and the big TV and speakers and stuff. So that kind of shows you what I mean. <laughs> Not quite, but almost. And um, yeah, so I'm trying the minimalist approach. So all my stacks of drawers and stuff are in the garage and they're neatly packed in order so I know exactly where everything is. And then I can just grab what I need for the project that I'm busy with at the time. So I just literally have a drawer of the stuff that um, I need for this project and I have it next to me. And then when I'm done, I can go put that drawer away again. So it's not in the house. So it sort of just saves a lot of space. And now we are able to have another room. So, yeah. The music I'm playing is um, from Epidemic Sound, so it's really free music that I can play in my videos, so I'm just trying to get a playlist going. Cool. Tracy says, the rate is so much more vibrant on my TV compared to my iPad. Is it? Yeah, I, I got this amazing light, it's this one. <laughs> And it just, it goes over the top of everything and it lights it up beautifully. And that's in the way. There you go. So yeah, perfect lighting. And then I got one little up light here as well. And it seems to make the red really pop. Yeah, that's right, Maureen. Forces me to put everything away and just keeps everything nice and organized. And it also makes me work with one project at a time. 
instead of trying to have too much going at the same time. If I go too dark, that's okay because it's very easy for me with the sandpaper to go over the dark colors with a lighter color. My rose looks totally different because I just did a very quick freehand outline. I didn't try and get anything precise. So some of my petals are bigger than what they should be and some of them are smaller than what they should be, which is fine because then it makes this one very unique to me. asking do I always draw what I'm going to paint or um, do I also trace yeah I trace I trace quite a bit sometimes quite a bit sometimes <laughs> I trace quite often yes so sometimes I just trace for the sake of time um, other times I trace because I'm not quite confident enough in my outline and that's usually when I'm doing portraits um, with portraits, quite, I prefer to trace the placement of the eyes, the nose and the mouth um, because I really struggle with that and I don't have the patience to slowly try and measure a proper outline using vector lines. So yes, I do trace.
Okay, I will be right back. My washing machine is screaming at me, so I'm just gonna turn it off real quick. Hey, Mesla Arts. Thank you. So the petals over here, they've almost got, it looks a bit like veins almost. So I'm just making sure to create that texture with my pencil. I'm done with the pan pastels on the petals now. So now it's all about um, doing the pencil details. I'm not even looking at the um, the water droplets here. I'm just focusing on the petal because it's going to be easy enough for me to place the water droplets over the top.
Motors Art Corner says, Jardine, you brought me luck. After two and a half months, my printer is finally here. I'll go pick it up, but I'll leave the live open so I can still support you. Thank you. And cool. Congratulations. It does help having a decent printer. Especially if you can make your own prints. Print your own art prints. And nowadays, any printer is pretty much good enough for that. Any new printer. Color printer. You don't have to shop extensively for a proper printer. Because most of them are pretty amazing with a color output. <laughs> hey, Wicked. Uh, I'm, I'm sending everything out tomorrow. No? What's today? Friday. So, Monday. Monday I'm sending out in three days. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I haven't sent it out yet. I haven't had the opportunity yet. So Monday, Monday I'll send it out. And as soon as I do, I'll send you an email with the tracking number so you can see where it is. I'm sorry guys. Dark in the okay. All right, let's move on to another color. So I'm gonna use the dark red, mm. number two two five, just as a sort of extension to some of the dark colors we just placed down.
Yeah, don't be shy. Ask away. Uh, yeah, tomorrow, so I'm doing a live Smart Art Box demo, the May Smart Art Box video tomorrow. And um, it is, yeah, I think I said it in the title, so there's no hiding what it is. <laughs> but it's going to be acrylic pours, so it's going to be super fun doing those. Okay, I'm going to be right back. I just have to grab another sharpener because I can't use this one. Turn the heat off so that shouldn't make any noise anymore. Wicked, that really sucks. Yeah, it's pretty, I don't know. I can't survive in the winter without heat in the house. Cause it, this house gets really cold instantly because it's a house is pretty much just tiles, um, tiles and bricks. So it, yeah, and then the same in summer, it just ends up being so hot that the air conditioning is running all day, every day. Luckily we have solar panels, but still. Um, I don't know how you survive without it. <laughs> 40 degrees, that's insane. That's like our hottest, you know, our hottest days in our summers as well. And that's, I feel for you. Hey, drawing space, welcome. Okay, my whole rose is pretty dark, so there are quite a few areas that we're going to have to lighten up. Which will be fun. It's really nice adding the lighter colors. I just pressed the button to record.
have tea. And I got these really nice arrowroot biscuits. And they're just staring at me and I'm gonna eat them all. <laughs> Mm. I probably should have had dinner before I started this. Okay, so this petal here, I want to make it bigger. So I'm going to... I think I'll, I'll use a pan pastel. So I'm going to use the permanent red pan pastel. And I want to extend that petal up a bit more. There we go. It's so bright. Did you see how easy that was? Like literally you can fix any mistake or redo something anytime with pan pastels and sanded paper. Hey Polo, welcome. Okay, so I'm going to sharpen up the Payne's Grey 181 again, just to do the dark areas in here first.
And like I said, if you go too dark, it is easy enough to lighten it up again. And then I'll use that red again. What do I do with it? Yeah. The sun is starting to go up by marine. It's 5 a.m. Tracy's 5.20 p.m. She's in West Australia. Is it dark by you already, Tracy? Because by 5.30 here in New South Wales, it's already completely dark. Uh, I'm using the dark red 225 again. And I'm, I'm creating circular strokes to create a texture. Oops. Almost dark. <laughs> I know I do. It's so many new names. A completely different uh, group this time of the day. Hopefully I get these urges to work at night a little bit more often. <laughs> Okay, now I want to add some brightness to this with what? Scarlet red, maybe? No. Yes. So the pale geranium lake one twenty one. Pale Geranium Lake 121. <laughs> so now to pop out those highlights even more, especially the, the edge of the petals that are more towards the foreground. This is going to help, especially, so the edges, we want to define them. Still not worried about the water droplets, that'll come later. Soon, kind of later, hopefully. <laughs> it's 
So that just made that stand out a bit more and push the dark area back more. Four eighteen in the morning with Ivy. How how do you guys do that? <laughs> I cannot. I'm usually in bed by 9 p.m. And then I sleep in till like 8. This is some weird music. Weird. It is buffering a lot. Hopefully it'll pick up again. Also refresh the page every once in a while, just to reduce the lag. Is, is anyone else also experiencing a lot of buffering? I love the intensity of this colored pencil. Hey 
Hey, Jamie. Hey, Kelly. This petal needs to be defined a bit more because it's sort of just disappeared. I love this color, it's making it really stand out. Like it's an intensely red rose.
Marion is asking, do beginner students still go to Udemy or just to your student portal? Well, um, you can go to the Udemy course through the student portal and I would encourage you to um, do it. But the new curriculum is going to cover everything in the Udemy course and a lot more. So it's going to go way more in depth with each topic. So, um, but it's going to take a year before that's done. So go ahead and do the Udemy course first if you got the time. Uh, no, Robin, I'm using uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. So they're the oil-based pencils, not the wax-based pencils. Okay, now there's some parts that I would like even lighter, almost like a bright pink. So I'm using the Pink Matter Lake 129. I first want a biscuit. <laughs> uh, Marion's asking, sorry, when did you say the new curriculum will be available? The new curriculum is in process, in progress right now. So we've already started. We, I just finished, we just finished term one, which is on all the different paper types. And then I'm starting term two tomorrow, which is on all the different pencil types. Okay, so using Pink Matter Lake number 129, the very, very bright highlights, I'm gonna um, use this pencil. So like the very edges of the petals.
You'd be amazed at what difference this step makes. Look at what that just did to the... Yeah, sanded paper is amazing. You don't have to worry about the layer the the layer limits. You don't have to worry about going too dark because it's easy to lighten it up. You don't have to worry about if you make a complete chunk of a mistake because you can just go over it again um, with pen pastels or pencils. So it's there's just so much room for error and correction. So it's it's a great paper to use, especially if you're a beginner. Um, I think it's probably a better paper to use than the watercolor paper. Thanks, Paolo, for joining us. <laughs> oh my gosh, just when you think the rose can't get any better. <laughs> A little bit of pink makes everything better. I don't know why I say that. I'm not that fond of pink. <laughs> Orange is my favorite color. Yeah, see paper Preferences are different for everybody. But if I had to pick a favorite paper right now, it is the sanded paper. But that's just for me. I just like how easy it is to use. Especially with pan pastels. I guess if I wasn't using pan pastels, then I would probably go with the watercolor paper. I'm really hoping that my dog doesn't bark right now. Taylor.
Oh cool, Tracy got a UR trial pack. Where did you get that from, Tracy? Got it on eBay. Cool. Australia has also got a Jackson's art supply store uh, online and there's a couple in uh, I know that there's two stores in West Australia in Perth I'm not sure about the rest of Australia but pretty much what the Jackson's UK suppliers and the Jackson's Australian suppliers offer the same things and it's easy to call Jackson's in Australia and just ask them to order something in for you if they don't have it on hand. And then you just pay the normal Australian shipping costs instead of international costs. Plus my sanded papers I've been getting from softpastels.com.au and um, their shipping prices are really good and they ship really quickly. You never have to wait too long for them. We are almost getting to the water droplets phase. We just got to finish these highlights.
Okay. I quite like that. Hey, Alyssa. <laughs> cool. Okay, so let's start the water droplets. After I have another cookie. Lady Marigold, I missed you. <laughs> nice to see you on here. Don't mention food, I am getting so hungry. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple of water droplets and then call it a day and go make myself some dinner. So it is almost eight o'clock. Should have had dinner. <laughs> um, okay, I think I am going to use this, continue to use the Pink Matter Lake number 129 for the water droplets. And pretty much, I'm just gonna create little circles everywhere. Where I can see droplets.
these are so many droplets. Droplets are so easy. So that was just a little bit of pink. Now I want to take the Payne's Gray number 181 and I want to create the shadow underneath the droplet with the sharp pencil. So paying attention to the droplets and seeing where the darker areas are. And I'm not going to use that color. I will use the Matter 142. Is that what I used before? No, not that one, sorry. I'm going to use the red. The Dark Red 225. I'm going to use that for the shadows. Thanks, DJ. Okay, now I'd like to use some of that nice, bright, pale geranium lake, number 121. So add some of that nice, intense, strong red in the water droplets.
And then the what is gonna make it pop. So give them a highlight with a white pencil. Do you see how quickly it made those water droplets look super real? ages but that that's it that didn't take too long I guess I don't think uh, I'm gonna use some of the geranium lake 121 um, just the edge of this palette is a bit too highlighted so I just want to make that die down a bit more There we go. And then let's do this big droplet that's sort of going off the side here. And the big ones over here. Okay, so I used the uh, pink matter lake 129 for that and now I'd like to create a shadow with the dark red 225. the shadows to be darker than that. So I'm going to use the Payne's Gray 181. Uh, DJ is asking, can anyone post art on your Facebook page even if you aren't a student? Uh, no, unfortunately not. Well, only students get access to the Student Portal Facebook page. And then um, if you post it to my, face, my drawing Facebook page, it won't be on the main 
part of the page it's usually on the sides if you click on posts that other people make on my page then you'd see it there but um no the art that gets shared among the students are obviously those that get access to the student portal facebook page and that's only students unfortunately <laughs> okay so i'm using Payne's grade number 181 to create those um, droplets that have a darker shadow underneath them. Okay, now I'd like to use the Pale Geranium Lake 121 to make the, bring that nice red out. Put some more of that, the dark red 225 in there as well. some of the pink metal like 129 for the highlights Use the white for like an extra strong highlight. Uh, I think I'm going to put some of the pale geranium in here. Okay, so that's how easy it is to do the water droplets. So pretty much just have to continue doing all the other water droplets, which I'll do later, but I'm super, super hungry right now. So I'm gonna have dinner and then I will probably Netflix something. <laughs> guys um this video is gonna be taken off of my channel now um so it was just here for while i was live and thanks to those who tuned in um but once actually no i'll leave this i'll leave this video on but the full complete tutorial of this rose will be available on the pan pastel youtube video once it's a youtube channel once it is complete um, but you can see the first episode of this um, where I did the giveaway that's on my channel now and then of course this one on how to do enhance the petals and how to do the water droplets so it's really easy to do the water droplets and it's really easy to layer the colors on the on the um, rose petals so it looks very three-dimensional and the color is insanely intense that's what I really love about the pan pastels so um, yeah 
And this was obviously the first time that I have streamed this time of the day. So it is currently 8 p.m. my time. I think I started, when did I start? 6.30 I think I started, 6.30ish. And um, yeah, it was a really good time. So it was so nice to see some new faces because some of you guys haven't been able to log on to my live streams because of the time difference for those in the UK. So it was really nice to see those of you that are in the UK and you've been following my work for a while. It was very nice to have you guys on the chat. So um, thank you. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.